हेलो गाइस वेलकम यू ऑल टू शून्य आई एस टूडेज टॉपिक फॉर मेंस आर्टिकल डिस्कशन इज फॉरेस्ट कंजर्वेशन अमेंडमेंट बिल 2023 रिसेंटली पार्लियामेंट्री कमिटी हैज इंडोज दिस अमेंडमेंट एंड हैज सेड दैट यस सर्टेन अमेंडमेंट्स आर रिक्वायर्ड इनटू फॉरेस्ट कंजर्वेशन एक्ट 1980 दैट इज द प्रिंसिपल लेजिस्लेशन रिगार्डिंग द कंजर्वेशन ऑफ द फॉरेस्ट टू प्रिवेंट the diversion of forest for the infrastructure development for the industrial purposes and prevent the mass scale deforestation for that matter forest conservation act 1980 which you must be studying in your environment section gs3 also you understand this topic is very important for this mains examination reason being that india is committed for the ambitious climate change targets ndcs already the concoction of panchamrit that we have presented at the international forum and to abide by the paris climate deal also we want to create big amount of carbon sink carbon stock in the form of forest one of the major key highlights that you need to understand and then we'll begin the lecture is about the forest conservation by the name itself it is very much clear forest conservation understand forest the definition of forest here into the previous act 1980 act was only limited to the forest recognized by the center or state government center or state government then we need to protect those forest and just in case a particular industry needs to be set up in those tribal belts it has to be a project is feasible in that area only in that particular case some amount of plantation or afforestation we need to do by providing certain campa funds which was created by the supreme court itself campa funds okay so let's understand let's dig deep into it what led to these amendments and how much these amendments will be successful if implemented if the provisions are implemented in adhering to the goals of india for the climate change into this background let's understand in two perspectives first perspective is about provisions provisions of forest conservation act 1980 what had been some provisions and we will also look into the need for amendment what is the need for amendment certain provisions that are crucial for this principal act was it prevented felling of forest felling of forest trees you understand one point felling of forest trees but here students understand the forest which are only recognized as forest by the central and state governments certain land certain parcel of lands are there which has not yet been recognized as forest land therefore the new act you will understand from here only what is the need what is the need for this amendment that new land which has yet not been recognized we want to bring that also under the ambit of forest conservation act therefore it was limited only to the preventing diversion of forest land towards desertification preventing felling of forest trees and for that what provision we have made we have made that the consent consent or permission from central government was mandatory these kind of words keywords mandatory often they ask in prelims also in upsc csc prelims you will find these kind of words is it mandatory or not okay it was mandatory and here how do you approach that the chief wildlife person can also give recommendations to the central government about it on behalf of central government the decision making authority it would be there forest conservation authority 
फॉरेस्ट कंजर्वेशन अथॉरिटी एज अ डिविजन वॉज सेटअप फॉर द कंजर्वेशन ऑफ फॉरेस्ट apart from that here into this the provision also included that if we want to declare a particular national park tiger reserves wildlife sanctuaries from here from this method only the state governments can proceed and get it declared as a national park or tiger reserve that particular protected area basically one more point about protected area protected areas under forests now here you will find that the new change the new amendment what you will find that by declaring a protected area how strong the security per perimeter is you know here what has happened that in the new change you will find that certain permission for the setting up of zoo was it necessary this has been permitted into the amendment that zoos can be set up inside the forest okay so now let's look at the need for the amendment and what has prompted for the amendment what has led to the amendment to resolve this problem you know prevent felling of forest trees that were recognized by center or state government supreme court recognized this problem long back in 1996 itself in godavarman godavarman तिरुमुलपद केस नाइनटीन नाइनटी सिक्स गोदावर्मन तिरुमुलपद केस नाइनटीन नाइनटी सिक्स ओनली सुप्रीम कोर्ट रिकॉग्नाइज दिस प्रॉब्लम दैट द फॉरेस्ट विच आर नॉट फॉर्मली फॉरेस्ट विच आर नॉट फॉर्मली रिकॉग्नाइज अंडर एनी स्टेट और central government not recognized by any uh, central or state government but conform to the dictionary definition of the forest will be classified as forest after this act okay so since we do not have the judgment said that supreme court said that supreme court said that since we do not have an all encompassing an all encompassing definition of forest since we do not have an all encompassing definition of forest therefore it is the responsibility it is the owners of center and state governments to find out those parcels of the land also and demarcate them as forest but what happened that since 1996 such steps were not taken by the state governments even by the central government also therefore recently ministry of environment and forest has taken up the cause and formulated an amendment into forest conservation act 1980 you got this point for that only some provisions were inserted into it for the conservation of these kind of land this was the agenda for the forest conservation now let's understand what are the major features of the amendment bill the act inserts preamble it is very much relevant to the commitment of india for reducing the menace of climate change creating more and more carbon sink through the forest preserving biodiversity what we are doing here will be adding more land and this preamble here talks about a different name has been given to the act that is called as one sanrakshan evam samvardhan adhiniyam adhiniyam means act one sanrakshan evam samvardhan adhiniyam it means that it is not just about conservation of the forest rather it is also about conservation of the forest as well as augmentation of forest adding up new land areas into the forest land that will help us achieve the climate change commitments at the international level this preamble talks about this and hence for that matter you will understand the feature land under the purview of this act which lands are into the purview of this act first category of the land is category 1 
all the forest that has been recognized under Indian Forest Act. Indian Forest Act 1927. Different forests have been recognized under this act. And then second thing, the forest that has yet not been recognized by this act but has been declared as forests. Okay, on or after 25th October 1980. That does not belong to this category but has been recognized as forest will also come under the purview of this particular act. They will be guided by the Forest Conservation and Augmentation Act which will be implemented as the act of 2023. Exemptions. Few exemptions have been given. For example, if the forest land, if the forest land is nearby the border, you understand the dense forests are there near the Arunachal border. Okay, the Doklam issue, we understand. Bangladesh border we are sharing. There also we have dense forests. Sundarvan forests are there. So what do we do at those places? How does the Forest Conservation Act will be implemented? No, these certain exemptions from these act has been given. If the, for example, hundred kilometers of forest has been forest land has been exempted from international borders international borders there is a provision of exemption if some critical infrastructure has been created nearby forest land then 10 hectares of land has been exempted okay so exemptions have been provided for the critical infrastructure critical security infrastructure for the borderland areas also and here these exemptions have been given it means that the strict provisions of this act will not be implemented in those forests in those parcels of the forest assignment leasing of forest land here the provisions are the same and rather understand that one point that forests are uh, forest conservation comes under concurrent list forest conservation comes under concurrent list therefore it is a matter that should be dealt by both the central and state government maintaining the federal relations but here little bit more tilt towards unitary feature you will find that assignment or leasing of forest land forest land to a non-government entity to a non-government entity for any purposes by the state government will only be and solely be based on the consent of center only after the permission of the center state government can lease or assign the forest land to any other entity You're getting this point permitted activities in the forest land what are the different permitted activities certain activities would have been permitted okay permitted activities in the forest land for example establishment of zoo or safaris in the forest areas will be permitted these kind of activities will be permitted but this is also one of the criticisms because now the public will make inroads to the zoos inside the forest on the name of safaris here one strict provision for your examination for prelims examination also important that it is permitted in the forest land but not those forests which have been declared as protected areas for example into the national parks into the tiger reserves you cannot create zoos or safaris like this therefore these permitted activities will be regulated by the wildlife protection act 1972 therefore forest conservation act will not supersede over the wildlife protection act 1972 you get this point other activities like ecotourism tourism we want to build this industry tourism industry silviculture practices silviculture methods practices silviculture basically helps in you know regulating the water cycle of the whole ecosystem good quality of timber good quality of wood is produced into the forest and creates a 
sustainable method for the forest development therefore these kind of practices are permitted ecotourism and zoos and safaris and any other such activity which central government may notify in the coming times therefore again the power is there into the hands of central government about notifying these activities restrictions on the de-reservation restrictions on the de-reservation it means that a forest has been declared as a reserve forest then the de-reservation of that forest cannot be done without the permission of the central government only and only central government not the state government similarly here you will find that issuance of directions the directions to the state authorities to any other organization dealing with the forest land will be solely given by the central government so here you will find that the tilt towards the dominance of the central government in issuing uh, different kinds of directions recognizing and or de-recognizing a forest is shifted towards central government these had been the major features and the crucial thing that you have to keep in mind is new parcel of lands will be added it will definitely add the advantage of increasing the forest cover tree cover of the india also it will create certain awareness about the forest the issue is about the permitted activities will they be genuinely regulated or not and the tilt towards the central government tilt towards the central government for taking most of the important decisions related to the forest now let's look at the significance of the amendment bill what is the significance incentivizing private players incentivizing private players for what for plantation creating more plantations on the new patches of the land on the new patches of the land this will in incentivize the private players for growing more and more forest areas more and more tree cover and they will earn through it okay so these kind of new uh, entry for the large areas for the development of forest will be there infrastructure development understand student this is a crucial point because infrastructure you know development is somewhere very very important because you know it is like 19 1980s act restrictions on creating infrastructure that would aid to the national security okay infrastructure development near borders here also the conservation act 1980 act created certain problems with respect to that infrastructure development in the border areas like vibrant village program let me tell you vibrant village program is there this is about creating infrastructure into the border areas into the villages of border areas but here also lot of forests are there so now the regulation of 1980 act will not hinder the infrastructure creation into the near border areas for the national security purposes is compensatory afforestation you know it will basically make land available it will make the land available for example infrastructure creation what did compensatory afforestation said that because for the creation of a particular industry for a particular project if a state government has given you a land and some portion of the land you required forest area then you have to fell down certain trees you have to cut down a little bit of forest in that case the amount of forest that you have degraded deforested or utilized in your project with the prior approval of the state government or central government then that amount of land should be compensated with the help of afforestation in some new areas that afforestation should be there although there is a clear cut criticism that forest system has its own unique ecosystem we cannot grow a forest afforestation is not the real forest self sustaining forest it has a different ecosystem altogether the forest ecosystem which cannot be replicated it, it is developed over decades and centuries for that matter so it will basically help in freeing up uh, doubly it will help freeing up certain land for the afforestation 
फ्रीइंग अप लैंड फॉर एफॉरेस्टेशन एंड गिविंग मोर अपॉर्चुनिटीज मोर अपॉर्चुनिटीज फॉर द इंडस्ट्रीज टू यू नो मेकिंग देम लैंड अवेलेबल अवेलेबल फॉर कंपेंसेटरी एफॉरेस्टेशन देयर ease will be there already ease will be there because already the land that they will be taking up is the new parcel of forest land newly recognized forest land therefore this activity will help in boosting the forest conservation and increasing the tree cover next point is about building forest carbon stock we have ambitious targets of creating carbon sink carbon stock you understand one process into the environment you would have read about carbon sequestration lot of carbon lot of fossil fuel that we are burning is going out in the atmosphere in the form of carbon dioxide carbon monoxide different kinds of obnoxious gases also but the most important is global climate change with the help of carbon dioxide now keeping a carbon stock means more and more forest land should be there forested area should be there more the forest more the carbon stock we have the green land we have therefore what what is happening in double manner already the forest that was there and hel helping you know private players incentivizing the private players to build more and more forest into those lands easing the compensatory afforestation more forest will be there and the quality of the preservation of forest will also increase because previously the lands were not recognized as forests and hence it will increase our carbon stock to meet up the global climate change needs here the students also understand one perspective that you know india understands the dynamic scenario of balancing the ecological you know ecological perspective of preservation of the uh, forest the strategic perspective of the preservation of the forest and you know environmentally sustainable livelihood opportunities from the forest three things we have to balance this is important for us to understand three things we have to balance first one is ecological balance of the forest strategic this point is strategic for infrastructure development it's for the strategic advantage of creation of infrastructure strategic importance and then is environmentally sustainable livelihood opportunities for the people who are dependent on the forest you know map program man and biosphere program we want to create a sustainable you know lifestyle where the people who are also dependent on the forest minor forest produced forest rights act you know forest rights act 2006 that also we need to recognize that certain communities has to live sustainably with the forest for the better management of the forest also therefore build for forest carbon stocks aid net zero ambitions you understand when the india has set up the target to meet up net zero carbon emissions net zero understand i am again highlighting the word net zero it mean it does not mean that at that time our target is the ambitious goal is by 2070 right now we come under the developing nation therefore we uh, cannot commit that by 2050 2055 we can set to net zero but we will be developed nation by 2047 by the 2070 2070 tak we will become a carbon neutral country this is our goal carbon neutral means whatever be the amount of carbon dioxide produced from us that much carbon sink should be there otherwise we have transition towards renewable source of energy more or less okay so this is net zero uh, always remember not zero carbon emission but this policy will indirectly help us to achieve the net zero carbon emissions by 2070 this is going to be the game changer with the significance come certain challenges also more than challenges i will call them concerns regarding this bill this bill has some genuine intentions of increasing the forest cover or just by bringing some parcel of land we will increase certain tree cover to include into the so called report the the forest survey report or will it be a genuine effort for the conservation of the forest moreover infrastructure development zoos ecotourism these all are mostly vague definitions okay they will create more human imprint on the forest protected forest also recognized reserved forest also 
so let's look at the concerns associated with the amendment of the bill now understand let's understand certain concerns here geographically sensitive areas if i talk about northeastern borders okay you will look at this also opposition directly coming from northeastern states now students understand that this point here you would have read about something about you know like environment versus development a debate has been there environment versus development in the forest land in the forest land we do understand the forest land has unique ecosystem the soil the quality of the soil the micro uh, flora and fauna of the soil are very important for the conservation of the forest therefore we have always had this debate environment versus development and we we need to find a middle pathway now geographically sensitive areas such as if i talk about northeastern region specifically here lot of you know national parks are there lot of biodiversity is there forests are there mountains are there and here if 100 km of land parcel 100 km of land parcel we are keeping it only for the development of infrastructure or for the security purposes leaving behind the conservation principle of 1980 act and superseding it with the augmentation of the forest for the infrastructure development purposes so geographically sensitive areas have lot of forest cover also therefore this debate now will get transformed into another debate that we will call as environment versus not just the development but security environment versus security which is more important you want to preserve the environment or we want to preserve the security at at our international borders okay so this is a concern regarding this that geographically sensitive areas here 100 km of exemption has been provided second aspect is centralizing tendency you have seen that various directions can only be issued by the central government to the state government state government needs to take consent of the central government for even leasing the land forest land for particular purposes here although the forest conservation forest conservation is a subject that comes under concurrent list that comes under concurrent list then why state government is made so much dependent on the whims and fancies of the central government for taking up the concerns for example specifically the northeastern states i am talking about or southern states the state governments do understand the principles of conservation of the forest they understand the local demands of the area so this should not have been diluted at the very first place now one important concern is we have talked about godavarman case okay 1996 what we have seen that into the 1996 supreme court holistically notified that certain pieces of the land which has not been formally recognized as forest which has not been formally notified as forest now because they are conforming to the dictionary definition of the forest as per the forest survey of india therefore we should bring them into the forest list we should categorize them into the forest for that only the effect is being given by the ministry of environment and forest this amendment but are they actually following the suit of the supreme court against supreme court judgment because here only they are considering the land purview i i gave you the two examples category one land the land which has already been recognized as forest under the forest uh, uh, reserve 1927 act as well as the land which does not come under the category one but on or after 25 october 1980 what about the previous land which was before 1980 certain pieces of the land which were recognized as forest but were not notified as forest what about before that and certain pieces of land which were recognized as forest but they got degraded they got deforested because of the human intervention into those lands we need to recognize them also under the purview of the amended act otherwise it may go against the you know ultra wise the supreme court judgment itself that that would be a bigger problem to handle 
okay deemed forest also here also the kind of permission that we are giving that you know movement of people would be there this is not necessary for that matter renaming of the act certain people said that you know one sanrakshan one sanrakshan evam samvardhan adhiniyam this has a sanskritic uh, a sanskrit undertone behind it so it is giving certain colors to the you know legislation a particular kind of religious color a particular kind of political party color to the legislation which was not necessary why we are changing the name of this legislation we could have directly said that it is forest conservation and augmentation act this is also one of the criticisms vague definitions vague definition just say for example this is proposed to be what could be proposed to be whatever is proposed to be by the central government right now while passing the legislation while criticizing being the critique of the legislation we are not able to understand what are the proposals right now it should be enumerated or we should wait for its proper execution into the rule book okay proposed to be most of the time a statement is used that whatever the consent given by the central government so state government is totally dependent on the central government right and wrong on what parameters the decisions will be taken it has not been specifically mentioned therefore this makes it again vague okay and central government may notify may notify what that clarity is not there therefore lot of vague definitions has been used in this act opposition from the northeastern states as i have told you in the beginning itself it is actually the cause of concern that northeastern states without their permission you know we have a huge border around arunachal pradesh nagaland mizoram so what happens that without their permission you have declared that 100 km of land parcel is for the security purposes and that will be regulated by the central government this is intimidating to the state governments for that matter purpose of zoo inside the forest is unclear is unclear what is the purpose of zoo why we have given that permission it it is also uh, causing concern that there is no necessity of zoo zoos are in the cities in the you know where uh, some animals are kept and people can go and learn from them certain things which is necessary you know point is there is no specific purpose for this zoo for this particular ecotourism into the forest land only for research purpose some permissions could have been granted okay but no necessity of pro uh, the provision of the zoo inside the forest and the point is double whammy what do we understand by the double whammy is that some critics also say that through this act what we are doing is what i have what uh, significance we have discussed just oppose that significance like a particular parcel of land a particular parcel of land at one front this act is doing that you know the forest land or let me look do like this the forest land which was conserved by the forest conservation act 1980 the conservation was there the forest land is now being diverted is now being diverted to the industries industries on the name of compensatory afforestation the land will be diverted to the industries to the infrastructure to the projects for the national security on one hand the forest land will be diverted which was previously conserved under the forest conservation act 1980 now the proposed amendment will divert these lands for these purposes and now what happens if a land is diverted to an industry or particular project as per the campa rules what they have to do they have to create an afforestation afforestation this afforestation is something like the new land parcels that will be added new land parcels of the forests 
okay of the forest that will be added here what happens that afforestation is going to take place in the significance i told you it will ease the process of compensatory afforestation these new parcels of land will be given basically to the industries for the afforestation purposes and this afforestation is not actually the forest students it is not forest rather it is plantations we call it plantations so these newly recognized recognized forests will be turned into plantations and forest lands will be diverted to industries therefore ultimately what you are seeing that the double whammy is that forest land is being converted into plantations in the long term if this act is being implemented this is a bigger criticism of it hope you got it okay impact on exemptions what are the different kinds of impacts on the exemptions so exemptions could be detrimental to you know significant forest in the himalayan regions the border regions basically i'm talking about himalayan regions from if you can start from punjab himachal pradesh jnk to uttarakhand to arunachal pradesh you can go himalayan region impact on exemptions for zoos specifically a lot of criticism it will make inroads of human footprint into the forest areas more and more expansion of the zoos will happen going forward and the forest areas will be open for the human intervention okay so these had been the concerns for with the amendment bill now let's understand what is the way forward so first point is balancing development and conservation so balancing conservation and development here you need to you need to understand that this is our top notch priority into the way forward that we need to understand that we cannot divert our forest into plantation we cannot divert our forest land forest land into plantations on the name of compensatory afforestation that balance we need to ensure into this way forward development for the development we should not provide this kind of land for the plantation purposes development is necessary we need to balance our development of course that that is very important for the strategic growth of the india we are a developing nation different kinds of infrastructure projects security projects are important for us but not at the cost of diversion of the forested lands rather these kind of plantation should be done not by acquiring the previous forest but on the degraded lands on the degraded lands previously degraded lands deforested lands not on the forest land you're getting my point the plantation should not be done on the forest land but on the degraded and deforested lands this should be our the balancing act for the development this change has to be ensured into the act private players so it was actually a uh, you know a uh, very crucial point when i read about that yes it will incentivize the private players to build the carbon stock it looks good in the theory private players you know private players if i talk about any enterprise if i talk about any corporate entity csr is one aspect just leave it aside if i talk about any private entity what for the industry has been set up for maximization of the profit profit maximization has been the goal now these private players are not interested in increasing the carbon stock are not interested in increasing the carbon stock this is our wishful thinking we are just you know indulging into a wishful thinking yes that private players will be incentivized for increasing this carbon stock rather when a market exists a clear cut market exists for carbon credits therefore it is a challenge for us to tackle the private players to you know increasing the carbon stocks that is afforestation through afforestation it will increase indigenous and forest community rights you understood what i said actually let me explain a little bit more you understand carbon stock means here we want to say that forest forest this point is important that forest should be left untouched 
this is called carbon stock private players if we provide new forest land newly recognized forest land and provide them for the plantations what will happen do will they actually bring forest or develop forest into the, those areas and create carbon stock no rather they will just make it as a point that more and more forest should be acquired more and more forest land should be acquired by the industries and what they will do to showcase that yes i have some carbon credits i am doing a forestation therefore the rapid rate of conversion of forest into plantation lands will increase and that is the problem over here indigenous and forest community rights we must respect the rights of the communities who are dependent and whose livelihood depends throughout the generations on the forest that respect should be there and with their consent only we should be taking decisions on the forest matters you have seen that forest rights act 2006 it has given the community rights as well as individual rights on the forest for the collection of minor forest forest produce also here also indigenous forest community and here i want to tell you not just the indigenous forest community but the state should also have a say what we are doing with the forest into their states central government should not from the single uh, stroke decide the matters related to the forest into the states as well on the name of just national security national security is important but 100 km stretch of forest how it should be ensured it should be in concurrence with the state government and the communities who are dependent on the forest hope you got this way forward so students into the conclusion what you can conclude is that yes the proposed amendments into the forest conservation act undermines the forest conservation it undermines the forest conservation but yes the act because the, when when this act will be formulated and how it will be implemented with the implementation principles some vague definitions the act must clarify and how it will be implemented and we hope that it resolves the problem of national security infrastructure development and creates a balance between ecological development or climate change ambitions forest conservation and the rights of the communities who are dependent on the forest as well okay so this is all and for the notes students join our telegram channel t dot me slash shunya notes five zero and these topics are available in our gs one two and three booklets that you can purchase and into these booklets we are explaining these in detail so that you can understand develop an understanding what things have been written and you can utilize them well into your examination thank you very much